Hey, fellas, you're dreaming of trailer hitches, bed covers, LED light bars, and bulbs. Not a bad gift for the missus, right? <laughs> Get them at Rose Auto in Blairsville on the Murphy Highway. Rose Auto specializes in customizing your vehicle. Wash away my troubles, wash away my pain. All right, folks, we're back with you, and we have got a world-renowned Allison Argon. Y'all know her from Little House on the Prairie, better as Nellie, the mean girl on Nellie. How are you this morning? I am fabulous. How are you? Well, you look good. Yeah, you look good. So Thank you, thank you. There you go. You are a busy girl. You are all over the place. One minute you're in California, next minute you're in New York, and then you're plumb over in France or Italy or somewhere. What are you doing? I'm doing everything. I mean, that's the thing is, you know, when everything shut down during the first part of the pandemic there, and I was like, what am I going to do? And my husband said, well, you'll think of something. You always think of something. Right. And I started reading the Little House books uh, every day on Facebook Live and doing live readings. And then I started doing stand-up online, and I have a show coming up. I'm actually going, what time is that thing? It's uh, November 20th. I know that. Um, and I got one in December. So I started doing comedy shows online, and I started reading online, and I started doing a cooking thing. Uh, who's going to do the cooking? Um, Mary Nellie Nelson. Right. And show people how to cook things. And then live stuff started coming back. And the next thing I know, I'm in New York at Caveat. Then I was at Rochester Fringe Festival, and I just just got back from France. I did seven shows in France. Oh, that had to be so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so much fun, no, no doubt. doubt. But now, now you're, you're, you're reading, when you do the, the reading, the Little House on the Prairie book reading, you have to put on your little hat. What, what is that called? Yeah, I got, I got, I got bonnets. bonnets. Where's my bonnets? Yeah, your bonnets. I do. I have my bonnets. I have a lot of bonnets. What happened was, is I have these darling bonnets. I get them from Minnesota. Right. And I would sell them at autograph shows and things. So I had a whole crate of them because I wasn't going anywhere. I had my autograph show stuff. So I went, well, I guess I should do something with these. So I would put on. There it is. Yeah. And, and people, people loved it. it. People just went, that's hysterical. And then they wanted the bonnets. So then I started selling the bonnets online. Uh, and it became like a cottage industry. So, yeah. So I got my store. And I got my online set of comedy show. And the cooking thing. And the reading thing. And, yeah, I have stuff. I'm sitting here. Oh, there I am. Knock the stuffing out of uh, Nasty Nelly is the Thanksgiving show. It's not stuffing out of Nelly. And then we have Nelly's Nasty Noel in December. Uh, that is okay. so at, uh, what time is that thing? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's right. right. It's November 20th at 2 in the afternoon Pacific time, right. uh, 5 o'clock Eastern time. I will be on stage at dot com. And, uh, and then I'm going to do it again in December. And let's do live stuff. Um, but you know something that I did, that I did not know about you till the last time, you know, we inter- the first time we interviewed you, that you did stand-up comedy. I did, that totally threw me off. And Four years. Yeah, I started doing stand-up. I was about 15. And I had, a lot of, I had friends, friends who were stand-up comedians. My father was a manager, and he was managing a comedy group, The Lithidious. Right. And uh, several of them became very famous later. And then they, I was kind of heckling a stand-up comic one night, and he's like, you think this is so easy, you want to try it? And it was just like daring me to do something. Right. So I said, okay. And I was 15. But I sat down with these professional comedians. We wrote an act, and I got up a few nights later and did it. And I was then doing stand-up four nights a week in L.A., comedy story and improv, for years. Right. And toured the country, and here on TV, I was on Merv Griffin, and, uh, and then a few years ago, a few years ago, then, I uh, started in 2002 doing a one-woman show called Confessions of a Prairie, you know what? And uh, say which, but that's actually your book, yeah. And then the book, and then um, a literary agent came to the show, and next thing I know, I wrote a book, and had a book deal, and then I had the book, Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, and so I had the show and the book, and then I was in France, and my French friend said, you know, do you want to do a comedy show in France? I mean, of course, it would have to all be in French. Can you speak French? Not at the time. No. (laughs) (laughs) It made it really crazy. So this guy, Patrick... Who spoke French, but had never been in a play or done stand up. And we got together and did a show. I didn't speak French and he didn't do stand up and had been in theater. And we decided to do a theatrical review in French, which made sense. And uh, then uh-huh. I went back to school and learned French and he learned where the jokes were. And now it's a really good show. And we just did a whole run of it uh, in October in France. I could not imagine. I mean, that had to be something to see, like a translator for your jokes. Right, it's just so crazy, and the French, of course, love it because they love Little House on the Prairie in France, and they oh, like yeah. me. And it's a it's a pretty goofy, funny show, and we pack them in. We sold out. But you know, being the mean girl on Little House on the Prairie has really been good to you. I mean, honestly, 
Right? And it's like, I mean, I enjoyed it at the time. I've always been very proud of what I did as Nelly. I thought right. it was fun. I had a good time doing it. Right. I felt like I got all my hostilities out and vented doing the show. Right. And I've been able to parlay it because it's fun to make fun of Nelly and the whole phenomenon of being right. a child star and being hated. So that kind of lent itself to stand-up comedy in a book. And I've just, every few months, I go, well, what can I do now with this? And because Nelly couldn't cook... So I'm writing a cookbook and creating a cooking show called Who's Going to Do the Cooking for people who think they can't cook or, or can't have never cooked. Well, they got microwaves now, man. Everybody can cook with microwaves. Are you kidding? We're good to go. Right. That's what I mean. And microwave, everybody can look like I can take the thing out of the box and I can put it in the microwave. It's like, yeah, but if the microwave stopped working for a day, would you starve? It's like, <laughs> well, so now, I'm telling people basic, right? Like pancakes. You make pancakes, for God's sakes. Yeah. Well, now you did some of this while you were in France, did you not? On oh. Because I remember it kind of, I thought, well, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. What is she doing up? Right. I did not stop. I was <laughs> between shows, which was, you know, difficult because the night my hair is up, right? Nine hours ahead, and then I was working so much. So my days off were, like, during the week. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had a friend who just had her kitchen redone in France, right. and she just got a new kitchen. I said, well, we need to do this. So we made a leek and potato soup in her kitchen. And then I was at another friend's house, and I said, should I do an episode? Let's make that carrot salad. And he's like, oh, will you make the carrot salad? I'll make the carrot salad. I'll do a thing with the salmon, but we'll put it on on the who's going to do the cooking. So I cooked in two kitchens, and I did one reading. I only got in one reading, but I, I, I did. I set up in somebody's living room. Um, so it was cool. So I just kept doing the same kind of stuff while I was doing the shows in right. France. Well, that's really cool. But now, there's some of the stuff. Now, you said you got all your frustrations and all your meanness out while you were Nelly back in the day. We need to ask yeah. your husband if that's true. I'd say he's probably got something else to say about that. Well, he always says, you know, you know, before I've had that first cup of coffee. Okay. It's like, okay, so Stan, Nelly also does exist before the first. Has, I have a very strong black English tea right here yeah. working. There you go. So let me ask something. Now, all this stuff that you got, you're constantly online. And, I mean, you have constantly got yeah. something going on, and it's really a lot of fun. And, you know, and that's the thing about it. When you see Nelly on, on on TV, a lot of people say, well, that's the way she really is. But really, you're, right. you're not. I mean, you're like a super, super nice uh, girl. And 90% uh, of the stuff you do, you're going to chuckle at some point. There's something funny going on. But uh, where can everybody find you and, and keep up with all the stuff that you got going oh, on? Oh, man, I'm everywhere. And and and, and then I'm doing so. There's also protect.org. I'm also president of the National association to protect children right. so you know i do my charity work too um i do everything so let's see i uh, uh bonnetheads.com right. bonnet, you know, fans are bonnetheads bonnetheads.com is my big main website you can see what i'm doing there of course i'm on facebook allison arngram i'm on twitter i'm on instagram i'm on everything they got i'm on youtube there is a youtube channel now called who's going to do the cooking which is me showing people how to cook uh, i'm going to be on stage at dot com on november 20th and again uh december oh gosh i believe the 18th right and um now that's so comedy there that's yeah. that, that stage at dot com mm -hmm. that's going to be your comedy show yeah, yeah. You log on there. You buy a ticket for like t 10 bucks, and then you log on when it happens, and it's like you're there watching the show, and I'm in your living room. Well, now, on your comedy, do you do a lot of spinoff stuff from being a child actor, or do you take stuff like in the mainstream today? A little of both, but I do. I talk about the whole craziness of being a young child star because I'm so hated. You know, people go into television because they, they want to be popular and have people like them. And here I got a TV series for everyone <laughs> hates me. I have that ticket. And people call me. People, that, that the fact that people have called me a bitch to my face every single day since I was 11 years old. Right. And, and thrown things, thrown things at me yeah. during the Christmas parade. Oh, no less. man. Well, that's um, that is. So, yes. Hey, it happens to me all the time. Through. Yeah, it happens to me all the time. And I've not yeah, been right. on <laughs> Yeah, it happens to me, but anyway, it's all good. But uh, this that's something else you touched on, and, and we talked about that a little bit on the last time, this uh, charity thing that you're involved in with the children. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about that a little bit before we get going. It's pretty cool. They started a few years ago, and uh, one of the things they saw were like loopholes in the law. Oh, yeah. Loopholes in the law were someone who had abused a kid, who sexually abused a kid, and it's like, well, you know, he's the mom's boyfriend or the stepdad, so we're, gonna, we're just going to give him probation. Right. I mean, it was multiple kids and continuous abuse, and like all the worst things that should be 15, 20 years, and they're like, People who normally had it been the child next door would have gotten 20 years oh, yeah. were getting zero jail time 
because they were, I believe the quote was, a relative or like a relative living in the home. Okay, that's everybody. Right. You've just it. That's not an exception. That's everybody. And so all these people were going free, and they were doing it again. And it was it was awful. And we said that's a bad idea. And we went state to state. We've changed that law in yeah. multiple states. Well, that's good. Uh, we also worked closely with the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, mm -hmm. making sure they got funded, making sure they got technology, training people to work with them. I mean, really cool stuff. And now we're partnering with corporations and looking to see what we can do for children in education and internet safety and just like everything. Right. That internet safety is crazy. Cause they're, I mean, it's hard to put a, a lid on that. There's just so much out there. You know, and kids are on the internet more now because I mean, okay, people had to go to school in places where the schools closed. And we're like, what are you do? Well, we got to school online, but that meant the kids were online all day. And right. after class is over, they're like, well, I'm going to stay online. And the problem is predators, people who, who hunt at children, they knew that and oh, they yeah. all got online. Mm -hmm. And and so that got really crazy, uh, turned into a free for all. So the problem is when your kids on the internet, the internet is basically, you know, a, a telephone line, right. like a phone book. Would you give your kid the yellow pages and a phone and say, here, why don't you go call some people? <laughs> you wouldn't well, do it. that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, so it is, it's, it's, there's, there's crazy people out there. And, they they will get in on like the group player video games and they will pretend to be another kid right. until the kid is talking to them and it's one thing ugly 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 mm -hmm. yeah well I'm pretty I'm pre you know I'm hats off to you on that I'm a school bus driver I'm a, I'm around kids a lot and I've seen, know. yeah I've seen the I've seen both sides of it broken homes from all the drugs and stuff like that and you know mm -hmm. I know growing up when we were kids we had a lot but nowadays these kids today have got so much on their plate it's not even funny and. Uh, yeah, but I'm, the I'm, world it just moves so fast. Everything happens so fast. Everything is bigger, faster, more. Oh yeah. I mean, I can hardly keep up. I mean, shit, I'm doing all this stuff on the internet. It's all I can do to keep up with the new platforms and the new mm -hmm. phenomenon. And for for kids, it's like everything changes so fast. You're in school and you say, "I want to be this when I grow up," and it's like, "Yeah, that job doesn't exist anymore. You have to learn a completely new skill." Oh, okay. Yep. And they're inventing new. Jo You're going to do things for a living that weren't invented in your parents' day. And the world is just going poof, 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 poof. And I I don't know how they do it i don't know how they keep up i'm with you girl i appreciate you letting us into your it looked like we're in your living room we're in your living room this you morning totally are this yeah. is about, this beautiful quilt a fan gave me this oh she wow this. she made this it's gorgeous yes it's, it yeah. is and um we are in my living room with my bookshelf and my fabulous chair with a big kitty quilt on it and kitty things and this is where i set up and i i do my readings and i do a lot of my stuff from here and then i go over there to the kitchen and do the cooking thing and i got a backdrop wait i'll turn this thing around so it's hysterical so i have these backdrops i buy we had a, a summer show and we decided Decided to make it a whole beach Hawaii theme, so we have. Oh, there, look at that! We have the beach there hanging on a thing. So You're we, good to go. I will have. Yeah, we hang up backdrops. We've turned the living rooms like been turned into a studio. It's there crazy. You go. Well, girl, we have got to get to a break, but I sure do appreciate you time, uh, Miss Allison. Thank you, thank you. And, and I, don't I don't hate you. you. We, we all, all love you down here. I guarantee you. Thank you, thank you. But if you see that new movie, Even Dreams, that I just did, and it's out on Blu-ray, you're gonna hate me again because I'm really mean in that. I, I love, love the mean part. part. That's, That's always the fun part. part. I guarantee. We love Even Dreams. Dreams. It's, it's a nice, nice movie for the whole family, family except, except I'm kind of evil. evil. There you go. There you go. All right. You have a good rest of your day. I will. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you, girl. Uh, but anyway, that being said, we'll be back bright and early in the morning with Jerry, uh, Jeremy Lynn Woodall from uh, Billy Joe Schaefer. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Morning Dish, Stephen Phillips with The Morning Dish. And Packy, thank you for mashing all the buttons, brother. And we'll talk to y'all in the morning. W249DBMWJULAM, Hiawassee. Well, look at here. Guess who's number one in the Nielsen ratings again? Hey, 97.7.